Chris Cervantes, and today I'm here with Achola Tracy and Sean Liu. All right, so today I have a question for you. Do you know what polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are? Well, if you don't, no need to worry, because after this video, I can assure you that you will definitely know what they are. So, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, otherwise known as PAHs, are a class of organic compounds produced by incomplete combustion or high pressure processes. Just as a refresher, an incomplete combustion entails only partial burning of a fuel. This may be due to a lack of oxygen or low temperatures that prevent the chemical reaction to be a complete combustion. And because of that, carbon monoxide is produced as a byproduct. So PAHs consist of three or more fused benzene rings only containing carbon and hydrogen. Some general properties of PAHs include that they are nonpolar molecules and they are lipophilic. This means that they have the ability to dissolve in fats, oils, lipids, and nonpolar solvents such as hexane and toluene. They are also colorless, but there are over a hundred different types of PAHs and the differences in the configuration of the rings may lead to a difference in properties. So I hope you all have been paying great attention because we have a surprise progress check for you today. So which one of these is a polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon, otherwise known as a PAH? Take a second and think about it. If you chose the letter C, you are correct. This molecule is called pyrene. It demonstrates four fused benzene rings. So now let's talk a little bit about the structure of PAHs. PAHs are generally formed by fused benzene rings. Benzene is one of the most commonly encountered aromatic rings. The structure includes six carbons in a cyclic formation represented by a hexagon with six hydrogens. It includes three double bonds. The common benzene structure is actually a hybrid of the two resonance structures. So now you may be asking yourself, what is a fused ring? By definition, a fused ring is a molecular structure in which two or more aromatic rings have two carbon atoms in common or being shared. These are some examples of PAH molecules demonstrating fused benzene rings. Because there are so many different configurations for PAH molecules, we encounter difference in properties. Some of those include when there are less than four fused rings, we encounter low vapor pressures so they condense and are absorbed to the surface of soot and ash. When there are four or more fused rings, the molecules remain gaseous. Larger PAHs are generally, generally insoluble in water, while others are soluble. Large members are also poorly soluble in organic solvents as well as lipids. PAHs are not synthesized chemically for industrial purposes. However, there are few commercial uses for many PAHs. They're mostly used as intermediaries in pharmaceuticals, agricultural products, thermosetting plastics, photographic products, and other chemical industries. Some examples of these PAHs include phenanthrene, which is used in the manufacture of pesticides and resins, asenaptin, which is used in the manufacture of dyes, plastic, pigments, pharmaceuticals, and pesticides. Pyrene is used in the manufacture of pigments. Other PAHs may be contained in asphalt, which is used for the construction of roads. One of the most common PAHs, which you might be familiar with, 
is not fitting. It is one of the PAHs with less than three fused six-membered rings, and it's the only PAH that is made commercially. It's often used as a precursor for insecticides and plasticizers. It is also found in mothballs. Mothballs are used when storing articles susceptible to damage from mold or moth lava. Naphthalin can cause the breakdown of red blood cells if inhaled or ingested in large amounts. The effects of PAHs in human health will depend mainly on the length and route of exposure. It also depends on the amount or concentration of PAHs one is exposed to. Some of the short-term effects include skin irritations and inflammations. The chronic effects of PAHs include carcinogenicity. The resulting cell damage due to exposure can lead to mutations, developmental malformations, tumors, and cancer. High prenatal exposure to PAHs is also associated with lower IQs at ages 3, increased behavioral problems at ages 6 and 8, and childhood asthma. When PAHs are released in water bodies, they're toxic to birds and aquatic life. So as we mentioned, uh, some of the PAHs, PAHs are really dangerous, and some of them are carcinogens, which means they can cause cancer. But actually, um, PAHs themselves cannot, uh, cannot be uh, carcinogenic, but some of their metabolic products are carcinogenic. So now I'm going to introduce uh, the chemical process of this metabolic. But first, the benzopyrene goes through an oxidation, and the left uh, benzene ring forms an epoxide ring. And here are two questions for some people who don't know organic so, chemistry. Uh, what's oxidation and what's epoxide? Uh, oxidation is simply adding oxygen to a compound because sometimes we might add several oxygen atoms to one single molecule. But what if we have oxygen on that molecule? The answer is simple. We just increase the bond to the oxygen. For example, from primary alcohol to alkyl, uh, from secondary alcohol to ketone, we just change the single bond to the double bond, and that's oxidation. Then, what is an epoxide? Epoxide is a cyclic ether with a three member ring, and this ring is approximately a collateral triangle and it, it is reactive. So, Here's another question. Why it is reactive? Because we know triangular structure is relatively stable, like from elementary math. But actually, in organic chemistry, a triangular structure, and that's especially that's an equilateral triangular structure, the bond angle is 60 degrees, which is way smaller than uh, an ideal uh, bond angle, 109 degrees. So it has a ring strength, which can make it, which can make it easier easier to be broken through a chemical process. So the last part is hydration. Um, hydration actually could perform under an acidic condition. So the first step is the a pair of electrons on oxygen go to a proton, proton and form an hydroxide group. And then the water molecule attack this part. And this pair of electron, move, uh, these bonds, the pair of electron move to oxygen and the, uh, the, uh, the water, water molecule add to that carbon. And then we have this intermediate. And the next step is the water, another water, water molecule attack this one because actually this water molecule has too many bonds. So this water molecule attack this hydrogen atom and this bond, uh, these pair of electron go back to oxygen and this, uh, this hydrogen uh, just bonded with this water molecule and finally we got this one as the final product for the hydro uh, hydration.
actually the final product for that hydration is this one. As you can see, there is another epoxide on the top of that aromatic, no, not aromatic ring, that cyclohexane ring that is caused by another oxidant. Uh, here is an overall uh, process for that chemical transformation. And the product is carcinogenic. And this is the negative effect it might cause by this carcinogen. We have another progress check for you today. Can you guess how you can be exposed to PAHs? Take a second and think about it. And the answer is... You can actually be exposed to PAHs by all of these things. Burning coal, contaminants in water and air, and even charboiled food. Other ways you can be exposed to PAHs include pickled food, cigarette smoke, coming into contact with hazardous waste areas, car exhaust, wood smoke, and charred food. Now that you know the effects of PAHs, we hope you take the appropriate measures to reduce your risk and be safe.